I love soccer and like obviously like I've had some time like to go over everything and like digest everything that's happened in the transfer window. And I think I've got some pretty good some pretty good stuff to offer here. So for the first time in a long time, let's hop on that plane, Jake. A little Nikki football for you and yours. For people that don't know, Manchester City have won three straight Premier League championships now, won the treble last year. I haven't seen that since Manchester United in 1999. Won the English Premier League, won the FA Cup, and then won the Champions League in nail-biting fashion, beating Inter Milan 1-0 in the Champions League final. And Manchester City, it should surprise no one, is the favorite to win the Premier League again. About minus 135 to win the Premier League. Uh, actually, now minus 150 at our show sponsor, BetMGM. Now, Manchester City may not be as good this year as they were last year. They lose Gundogan, goes to uh, goes to Barcelona. Riyad Mahrez goes to Saudi Arabia. Mateo Kovacic comes over from Chelsea. Like, the team might not be as good this year, and it still probably doesn't matter. Like, they are so far and away the bad. I think Arsenal are really good also. We'll talk about Arsenal in a second. Their big signing, Declan Rice, who's really tremendous English defensive midfielder who's basically great at everything. Manchester City might not be as good. And what does that mean? It means, like, they may not win the treble this year. But they are, like, deserved favorites to win the Premier League. So, like, maybe not as good, but they're still going to be awesome. And they have the cyborg, Erling Haaland, in front of net coming off a, in the first season in England, an English Premier League best 36 goals in one season, winning, uh, scoring the most goals last year in England. Harry Kane had 30. We'll talk about him and Tottenham in a second. Now, Arsenal, and I'm just, I'm just going to, like, quickly run through all the top teams, and then I'll give sure. you the bets. Arsenal... We're in first place for most of the year last year, top of the table in the Premier League, and then injuries at the end of the year in Manchester City's overall greatness catches up with them. But Mikel Arteta's Gunners end up finishing second in the table. They're back in Europe in the Champions League. And, like, th their squad is absolutely stacked. I mentioned Declan Rice was their big signing. They actually, like, outbid Manchester City and, like, won a bidding war with Manchester City for Declan Rice. And they are a very, very, very expensive team. Arsenal's going to be awesome again this year. I think they are a top four lock. Will they win? Maybe not. Maybe they're not ready yet. Maybe it's still Manchester City winning the Premier League. But I think Arsenal's absolutely a top four team this year in the Premier League. My favorite team and the favorite team of our brand manager over at BetQL, shout out to our guy Andrew Williams, is Chelsea. We're wearing really cool retro kits this year, like 1980s inspired kits. They're actually really cool if people want to check this out. Like search like Chelsea kits for this season. They are like, they have gone like back in time as opposed to like trying to do something like really like new and different and crazy. They're actually really cool. And what else is cool for Chelsea is that they have a legitimate manager in charge now, which they didn't last year after they dismissed Thomas Tuchel, right? With, uh, with Todd Boley, the American, taking over after Roman Abramovich has to sell the team. Because if you know, the war in Ukraine. Uh, but he hires Mauricio Pochettino, former coach of Tottenham, former coach of PSG, led Tottenham to a Champions League final where they lost to Liverpool. Pochettino is a really good manager and a steadying hand. The problem with Chelsea last year, they spent so much money and brought all these new players in, and the, the dressing room was literally so bloated that players were like sitting out in the tunnel because they had too many players. Um, they sold a ton of players off this summer and also brought a bunch of new players in. Now, Christopher Nkunku, who comes over from France, is supposed to be a great attacking option up front along with Nicholas Jackson, who comes over from Villarreal. He picked up a knee injury. He's going to be out a couple months. That's going to hurt Chelsea in front of net. They did not score a ton of goals last season either. I think it's going to take Chelsea a little time, but I think Chelsea get back to the top four this season. Something to keep in mind with Liverpool and Manchester United and Arsenal and Manchester City, certainly, is that those teams, in addition to playing the rigorous Premier League season, have to play in the Champions League as well, or have to play in the Europa League. Like, they are playing, like, international competitions as well. Chelsea, by virtue of finishing 12th in the table last year, literally just get to focus on domestic cups in the Premier League. They don't have to have they make, a, like, a Thursday trip to, you know, Uzbekistan or, like, Turkey to play a game. They don't have to do that. They get to focus on playing solely in England. And I think that's actually a great thing for Chelsea this year as they just look to steady the ship a little bit, maybe get back into Europe with a top four finish when it's all said and done. Team to be relegated. Let's go with Wolverhampton Wanderers, aka Wolves, at plus 225. Their manager, one time like a Spanish national team manager, like a like was like Real Madrid manager for a couple weeks also, Julian Lopetegui, just leaves the club, like disagreement with ownership on how things should be run. Ruben Neves out the door, Jao Moutinho out the door, Raul Jimenez out the door. Now Gary O'Neill comes over from uh from Bournemouth, really good manager. I don't think they have enough firepower to score enough goals to stay up. I think they get demoted down to the championship. Wolves to be relegated, plus 225. Anthony, I'm guessing that you think Manchester City are going to win the Premier League. I feel like that's kind of like their 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 minus price to win with with 19 other teams. So I'm guessing you like Manchester City. So in lieu of asking you, hey, like who you been to win the Premier League? 
give us something spicy that that you've got here. I know like you do a ton of work on the stuff. You're really good with the stuff. Give us some spicy bets that you've got for the Premier League season coming up here starting in about 48 hours. Yeah, so I'm going to go with Brighton uh, plus 550 plus 650s are out there to make the top four. Uh, The Seagulls last season closed uh, as one of the most profitable teams in the entire league. They're incredibly well run, analytically run. Uh, they've been kind of like the money ball, one of the money ball teams in this league for the last couple of seasons. Uh, and they actually lost their manager last fall. Grand Potter left and they got better under the new manager, Roberto De Zerbi. And it's crazy because the market had so much respect for this team. that They closed as a favorite on a neutral field against Man United on April 22nd. And now, uh, you know, we fast forward a couple months. They did lose Alexis McAllister, but they have uh, replaced him with potentially Mo Kudas from Ajax, who uh, projects as a really, really good player. And they may keep their best midfielder, Caicedo. So if they're running it back and they have a ton of young talent coming in, a full year with this new manager, why are they priced so much worse than United if, you know, three months ago, the market thought they were as good, if not better, than Man United? So I really don't agree. And I think people are expecting regression because Brighton is not traditionally a big six team. They don't really belong in this conversation. But... They have really young talent. Evan Ferguson, uh, an Irish striker, 18 years old last year, played 10 matches uh, and and put up elite striker numbers, numbers that are comparable to what Harry Kane did in his early time at Spurs. So that's the comp. And do I think he's going to be Harry Kane? No, not necessarily. But he's good enough. And if he develops, they get more minutes from him. Uh, I think Brighton is plenty live uh, to be another you know top four threat. And I don't really think there's a huge gap. After City... You get Arsenal, Liverpool, United, Chelsea, Newcastle, and Brighton and Tottenham. I think the gap between two to seven is not going to be that big this year because I think Arsenal could potentially take a step back. Uh, Liverpool has defensive flaws. United was overrated last year. They got better this year, but how much better? So I think there's a lot of parity in the middle between two to seven. And I think that betting on you know Newcastle and Brighton to kind of hang around and maybe outrun the regression that the market thinks is coming uh, is, is a good bet this year. Maybe in just like a minute here, because the Women's World Cup is still going on, and even though the United States was eliminated, there may be some valuable betting opportunities for people that are, are so inclined that want to stay up with you and, and watch some of the matches in the middle of the night. Anything interesting to you in the current, this could be a single match. This could be, I would like to bet more on France, who's obviously still alive, beat Morocco. Any any outrights, any match bets, anything here in a minute on the Women's World Cup, just because you've kind of been our expert on that event. Yeah, I think Spain, uh, you know, even up like even path is playing better than anybody right now and they're probably the you know should be the favorite england is the favorite because they get the easiest quarterfinal matchup but again have not been impressed by england uh, you know sneaked by nigeria in penalties did not deserve to even win that match uh my favorite bet is spain money line against the dutch you can find even money out there uh thursday night 9 p.m eastern so we actually get a good time slot for that one uh for the east coast and you know american viewers uh the dutch want to have a ton of the ball their best midfielders out suspended and Spain is just a much better version of what the Dutch want to do with much better attackers. I think it's a bad matchup for the Dutch. Uh, and I think Spain uh, will get through with their depth too. As we get deeper in this tournament, Spain's depth, uh, as good as anybody in the attacking group. Dutch, a little bit underwhelming in the round of 16 as well. So I, I do like Spain, uh, and I took some money line. Do you think you'll be betting some EPL this season? And the answer is no, that's okay. I would love to tell you yes. Because I, I do think it's one of those classic things like if the season took place during the summer or the games run on Saturday morning all the time. Like if it was a weeknight event, like imagine the EPL, even though this is impossible because it's, you know, in England, like imagine it was on like the East Coast of the United States and it was on Tuesday nights. Imagine it replaced Maction or something like that. Then uh, then I think I'd be in. It like would occupy a space of time that I could devote time to it. You, people know our schedules. Maybe we bellyache about them a little too much on the show, but like we do when football season really, really starts in a month. We will be on the air six days a week, Monday to Friday, and then Sunday morning. We will also have a lot of media that is not in those designated slots. And so Saturday morning is kind of sacred in terms of our football schedule where, like, my kids will both be in soccer. Like, they'll have games on Saturday morning. Like, Saturday morning is the one time of the week that is, like, unplug from everything. Spend time with your family. It's the fall. You're outside. Maybe go grab lunch out somewhere. Spend some time with the kids, one-on-one time, whatever. And, uh... And Premier League just happens to have all of their matches with like limited exceptions during that exact win, that like four hour window of time the entire week. So I I think the Premier League is fun. I'm into it. It's cool. 
uh, it just it can't occupy any time in my betting or in my fandom, unfortunately. Yeah, I in another life, I feel like I would be like do what I do for the NFL with soccer because I absolutely love soccer. It's just it's tough when football starts. 